Thanks for being with us this afternoon, and we begin with breaking news. Schools all across Washington State will be closed for six weeks, starting in just a few days. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Janner Castro. And I'm Mark Wright. Governor Jay Inslee made the announcement within minutes of President Trump declaring that national emergency over coronavirus. So our closure impacts 295 school districts in Washington, both public and private. If they aren't already closed, they have to be closed by this coming Tuesday and stay shut down until April 24th. 1.2 million students are impacted. And the governor also expanding his ban on large events to the entire state. He also announced that the total number of deaths has risen to 37, with 568 confirmed cases among the 6,500 people who have now been tested. There are now corona cases in just about every state in the U.S., either confirmed by state health departments or the CDC. We have several news crews out today following the latest developments. Kristen Ayers is live in Kent, where a man in a quarantine site walked away. But first, we want to get right to Drew Mickelson live in Olympia, where a school closure announcement affects more than 1 million students. Drew? Well, Jessica and Mark, the governor says the growing number of cases and deaths really forced him to make these restrictions statewide effective next Tuesday. He says it will help the state, quote, get ahead of the wave. Inslee compared these days to World War II when Americans were encouraged to share their tin and other medals for the benefit of the country. Some schools, like Olympia's Pioneer Elementary, close today, ahead of next week's start date. The district says someone with a connection to the school has a presumptive positive test. State Superintendent Chris Rakedall talked of the shared sacrifice the community is going to have to make. He says everyone from school bus drivers will be involved during this, this time, serving and delivering free lunches, and teachers will continue to educate students, perhaps remotely, he also explained how some campuses are going to be turned into child care centers, but the governor says he is urging parents to find alternatives. So we are really asking people to think of the schools as the child care center of last resort, and we want to make sure the priority of that is given for the families of health care workers because we simply cannot have nurses leaving hospitals when they become deluged with patients to do child care. And same thing for first responders. The governor says he did not reach this decision lightly or easily, but says it is the best decision for the health of the entire state. Back to you. Drew, before you go, the governor has talked potentially about calling up the National Guard. Was any more said of that today? O only the potential that that still could happen. He says we have not reached that point. He is not getting those requests. The state superintendent mentioned that perhaps the National Guard would help deliver some of those lunches to the to the students who are relying on those breakfasts and lunches. Uh, and the governor said perhaps the National Guard might be needed for security at some point, but he says we are not there, at least not yet. Still a wait and see situation, Drew. Thank you. Uh, we are hearing today from students who are still in shock about not being in school for six weeks. Students at Everett High School had their last day of class today before their school is closed, and most of them said there's been a lack of a game plan from teachers who themselves are looking for guidance. Teachers have been like handing out their like emails and like Google Classroom stuff, but like I don't really know that much. Our teachers are still learning the ropes of all these online things that we're going to have to use, so we're all learning together. In Everett, the Everett School District planning meal pickup sites at 28 different locations. Meals will be free for all kids under the age of 18. The mayor of Kent today says her worst fears have come true after a man who may have been exposed to coronavirus walked away from a quarantine facility. Kristen Ayers, live in Kent right now. Kristen, what do we know about the man now? We actually don't know a lot about him, and no one we spoke to knows who he is or where he is tonight. He was actually supposed to be in isolation here at this quarantine facility, uh, awaiting test results from coronavirus. But instead, he actually crossed the street around 8 this morning and went into that gas station. Uh, surveillance video from the gas station shows the unidentified man entering the station. Employees say he was inside for just a few minutes, and during that time, he shoplifted some items from the bakery section and pulled a bottle of milk from the refrigerator. A motel security guard notified employees that the man was in the store, and that's when one of them confronted him. I asked the guy, are you from the hotel across the street? He said, yes. I said, you need to leave, sir. He said, 
I don't have any virus. I don't have uh, any coronavirus. I'm angry. I, I, I'm, I'm frustrated. And I feel like our entire city through this process continues to be disrespected. The man later boarded the number 153 bus. County officials say that bus was sanitized and taken out of commission. The store has also been sanitized tonight. Uh, speaking to the mayor a little earlier, she told us that she is making some demands from the county today. She not only wants this building staff to make sure this sort of thing doesn't happen again, she also wants a fence outside of it, and she says she wants more communication from the county. Live in Kent, Kristen Ayers, King 5 News. Kristen, thank you. Meantime, King County's head of the Department of Community and Human Services talked this afternoon about that quarantine patient walking out of the facility. He reiterated there is no order that can force people to stay in facilities, but they will continue to make changes as to how they operate based off what happened in Kent. We're absolutely now adjusting the way that we staff these facilities. I think that's important. I think it's not the last time that we're going to continue to adjust as we go forward. Uh, you know, this is a type of care and a type of system that uh, a week ago in this county did not exist and that we are trying to stand up right now in, you know, hundreds of units because we see that the need that is coming to this community is going to have us providing for hundreds or thousands of people who are going to need this kind of care. Floor says epidemiologists are tracing potential coronavirus cases across the state. He did not know if they were trying to trace that case in Kent. Meanwhile, today, the president announced a national health emergency to deal with the coronavirus, and that starts with $50 billion in emergency funding. The president rolled out a long list of ways to help states like our own. Large amount of money for states and territories and localities in our shared fight against this disease. In furtherance of the order, I'm urging every state to set up emergency operation centers effective immediately. The president and his health experts say they are approving private tests, which can tell whether someone has or does not have the virus. In about 24 hours, they've worked with retailers to make space available for drive-up testing as well, like in parts of New York State are already doing, and also to loosen restrictions or regulations, I should say, which, for example, the president claims could allow doctors with licenses in one state to be able to help out others in another state. We have some breaking news. In just the past hour, Microsoft has announced that Bill Gates, the co-founder of the company, is stepping down from the company's board of directors. Microsoft says Gates will step down to dedicate more time to his philanthropic priorities like global health, education, and climate change. This is the latest move Gates has made at the company. In 2008, he transitioned out of day-to-day -day operations. He served as chair of the board until 2014. Microsoft says Gates will still serve as technology as technology advisor to CEO Satya Nadella. He is also still one of the company's top shareholders. He owns 1.36% of Microsoft shares, according to CNBC. Gates also announced today he is stepping down from his position on the board of Berkshire Hathaway. He put out his own statement on LinkedIn today, saying the decision in no way means he's stepping away from the company.